Lucky was born so far away, so we could both make fun of distance. Lucky did I love a foreign man for Lucky Tax of Maybe I was on the Indie Show. And the freckles on your barn. Never could imagine they were lonely. And then we both to love some more. Whenever, wherever, we're meant to be together. My name is Professor Simone Isaac Berry, Berry Science Lab. Today, we will be looking at Maxwell Equation 4. Anyway, just a little fun fact. This guy over here, James Maxwell, actually, actually, let's just switch to a thing I had one year ago. So basically, in a lecture I had like one year ago, when Corona Corona wasn't around, I like switched from the last slide of explaining how induction works, basically magnet free, magnetic field creates electric field, boom, boom, current. And then I switched to James Maxwell's face. And then, well, I was in an area where a lot of Middle Eastern people lived. And then, when I switched the slides, one or two of the men cheered. They were like saying, hooray, hooray, he loves them. And then I said, no, no, this is not your man. This guy, this guy is not a terrorist. He's one of the best scientists of all time. Well, he was deriving the speed of light equation, which was 1 over the square root of mu naught epsilon naught. And he found out that Sir Isaac Newton's calculations were wrong, and his perception of, well, uh, speed of light was wrong. C plus C is not 2C. If you travel at light speed, it won't like go anywhere faster. So, what he declared, what James Maxwell declared, was that Newton was wrong. And you know who woke up in the grave after that? That's right, Leibniz woke up. And he had forgotten how to say German after about 200 years of being buried alive. So he just said, Look at the Isabel infinitism wrong. And then it was a territory they owned at the time that was part of Germany. Then the Brits from Hanover took a bunch of dirt. And then they crammed him back in the grave. Get back in there! Get back in! A colored representation of it. 1865. <laughs> anyway, uh, actually 1820, but still. This guy, who is not your man, by the way, for, for the small uh, percentage of Middle Easterns out there. <laughs> Anyways, this man is James Maxwell, and here we are with the Maxwell equation for typography, right? All right, so let's start with this hot-looking diagram over here. Don't worry, it's not hot as in, no, 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 we don't talk about that here on Bear's Eyes Lab. Anyways. This diagram over here, let me switch from pink to a better color. But anyways, pink, these pink things, first of all, this is a closed loop. And this is a current carrying wire, as you guys should already know. Hans Oersted uh, discovered that these created magnetic fields. But anyway, this is a closed loop. And this closed loop, According to Ampere, this closed loop would have a magnetic field at P. And since this other closed loop is also part of the wire, like this wire over here, th then let's say we have Q, which is also another totally creative name, and I'll just take it from the alphabet. Q. Creative as hell, man! And now, these should have roughly the same magnetic field, at least according to Ampere. But when I had a talk with him back from that uh, previous lecture, when I traveled through the time machine, he said that if I severed the ties, if I severed the wire, so that this little loopy guy over here couldn't get any more electricity, and thus no more magnetism, that means that Ampere would think, nope, no more magnetism is going here. Here, he thought that this was zero. No, no. He thought that this was 
zero. What? Experiment? Actually showed that it was about the same the magnetic field at P. But how? Well, according to his law, Ampere's law, B dot DL, at least the closed loop integral of it, will always be equal to mu naught I enclosed. And Ampere thought there was no current, then that means that there was no magnetic field. So, Ampere thought that this would be zero. But experiments showed otherwise. But how could this be? And Pierre should have been right, right? He just copied all the notes of Forstead. He had to have been right, right? But then, James Maxwell, not your man, by the way, from those of you who are from the Middle East. And so, B dot DL is equal to Maxwell, while sitting in his laboratory, wasn't hijacking a plane, but he was instead thinking, maybe there is another way we can generate magnetic field without current. And then Volta woke up from the grave and was shut down again. Anyways. <laughs> He had seen the discoveries of Faraday. He was like, oh, you can generate current without magnetic field, uh, without a battery. And now he said, uh, said, you can generate current without magnetic field. And well, he basically just died again because of the discovery. So I may have said them in the wrong order, but that fully was what happened in Italy by the time of the discovery. Anyways, this is the equation that he thought, Ampere thought. But what the Frenchies and the copiers didn't know was that there was something different going on. There was something called a displacement curve. Basically, what Maxwell thought was that magnetic flux obviously generates electric current that's what we saw with Faraday's experiment, which Ampere, uh, uh, which I mean Volta, once again woke up from the grave and died from. And this was obvious, but then he thought, could an electric flux generate a magnetic field? It was fascinating, at least. And he thought the answer was yes. And according to his experiments, the answer was also yes. So, he stated that epsilon naught, it's our good old friend epsilon naught, 8.85 times 10 to the uh, minus uh, 12 power. And that's times d. <coughs> um, you're getting in my way. Man, all these like constants are really hard to remember the value of. Magnetic flux, well actually electric flux, over dt. I don't know why I put the parentheses there, but I just did, so suck it. So this is Ampere Maxwell law. And now, if this ever goes to zero, there's something else behind the scenes. And now you might be asking, what the hell are these, dude? Well, these are capacitors. And the capacitors here is what's generating the electric flux. So yes, here at point Q, there is a magnetic field. Obviously, if we just deleted both of the capacitors, then well, nothing would really ha be happening. If we deleted both the capacitors, then it would make sense. There would be no current. So in this case, Ampere's law does apply, but when there's electric flux going on, Ampere's law doesn't cover everything, and so Maxwell has to. Technically, this is the only original law that Maxwell has written. Not even fully original, too. He only wrote a tiny part of it. So yeah, that is Maxwell equation number four, very simply. 
You can go for more in-depth explanation, but this is the simplest explanation you can get on YouTube, and it still can let you understand without feeling like a baby. Thank I'm you. Gonna say I have to go to play soccer and open the door and pretend like you you take the bike. Okay, say it. All right. Now I gotta go bike, and hopefully. You wanna say whenever, whenever, and then leap. Action. All right. Now I gotta go bike, and hopefully no, I. No, I have to go to the soccer field. Oh. Okay. Now I have to bike. And, no, okay. All right, now I have to go play uh, soccer with my friends. Uh, hopefully, I won't get uh, run over by a plane like my brother was. Uh, check out Mantra Vice Plane for more details. But anyway, thank you everybody for watching, and I'll see you next time. Whenever. Whenever? No, and you, you, you no, no, like, you like dancing. Whenever or when, uh, wherever I see you, thank you, and I'll see you next time. Whatever. Subscribe to Bari Science Lab to fall in love with math and science, especially programming.